What is going on guys, we are back with more World Cup and the match has to be played on main, this is the World Cup tiebreaker between Spain, Malakas is playing for Spain, DDK is playing for US East, it's the first match of three, they have to play on main because there's some issues on smoke tours, I don't know the background story, so there you guys can see there's like 5 bajillion people joining, I might have to, I hope it goes away if I click ignore the uh, spectators, yeah it goes away, amazing, because I don't want to see everyone joining, so Malakas brought Psychic spam has a Sala Stila to help with opposing psychic types because it can be really annoying if you boost up opposing psychic types. And TDK brings an interesting balance team. Z move Coco or Z move Landruth, Mega Herald Cross. We have seen Shad Shell packs a lot lately in World Cup, <laughs> so I'm kind of thinking that. I'm not sure if there's like a, a chat that I can join. That makes this more interesting because I know you guys always like the smog to chat, but this is on main and there's not a smog to chat. And I don't want to miss any turns. I try to figure out for the next game if there's like some chat that I can join or if there's like if some of them disconnect and I get a minute, I'll see if I can find a chat. But he'll, TDK gets the lead matchup correct, so Malakis maybe predicted him. Uh, maybe he scarfed Dagi and he predicted him to leave with Tapu Koko, that's definitely an option. Uh, but he should be Zimov Dagi. Um, his lady should be Scarf because he has a Mantine to check stuff like Volcarona. And Dagi, Dagi is like the most likely Zimov user looking at his team, so I don't think he's Scarf. So we probably just predicted him to lead with uh, Mew slash Heatran. And, or I don't think he's Skystrike. If he's Sky, nah, he's not Skystrike on this team. He's not that weak to Heracross, he has Psychic types that destroy, that destroy Heracross, he has Clefable to check it, and Clefable runs max defense in uh, Sun and Moon. Yeah, this is definitely not the, this is just like Tonic Rage, I assume, with Subtoxic and Screech. That's just what I'm thinking at least, and I assume TDK is just Subtoxic Tran and Rox Lando. Uh, he just u turn okay, that makes me think that he could be Scarf, let me actually open my calculator, I didn't open it yet. Yeah, that makes me think that he scarfed just the way he how he went for U turn turn one like that. And I mean he can be rocks, but I feel like Okay, why does it not let me open the calculator? Let me just go to the lobby. Like East has used a uh, scarf. Team US East has used Scarf Land a few times. Um, and actually only the 5% but Celestia is bulky so we will find it later. Like Rock's trend is just not that good at the moment because you want to have a sub up. So you don't get trapped by Dagi, that's why I like the subset better. Malakis is potentially gonna go into Alakazam here because it will trace the flash fire and cannot get hurt by a fire move. Or he's gonna go into Mantan but Mantan can get hurt by the poison, uh, by toxic obviously, which this the heat and set runs toxic most of the time. Like that's just what I'm thinking at least. He doesn't have to be toxic. He can also just be T spikes, toxic and the heat can have like sub protect. We have seen that before. I think was it Zemrock? I think it was PDC. He used um, T spikes plus sub toxic, um, a sub protect heat But it's rock strength, so that makes me. Uh, I think that confirms that he's Scarf Landris. I mean, it makes a lot of sense if you look at TDK's team. His other only potential Scarf would be the type of Coco or the Heatran, and yeah, Scarf Tran is not really a Pokemon at the moment. So Malakis is gonna be forced to default here. He definitely doesn't want rocks on his side. So TDK is either gonna go for Toxic or. Mm, gonna top of Coco slash go into oh he has taunt wow TDK the god that's a fire play so he's taunt rocks uh, lava plume and then either off power or toxic in the last slot I assume toxic um, I, I just depends on the pecs if the pecs has these spikes maybe this doesn't have toxic like I said mm. If he has T-Spikes on Pex, he could also have like Substitute on Heracross. So he goes on into Mew, so if he gets burned here, this will get synchronized and Mantine gets burned as well. Exactly. And this could be Volt Switch Mew. Malakis' best play is probably just going to Clefable here. 
For Fable basically eats up everything that Mew can do, at least the uh, standard defensive Mew. And the Mew always showed left over, so that confirms that it's defensive. It has Ice Beam, which makes a lot of sense if you look at his team. His Thousand Arrow switch and his Mega Heracross, which doesn't switch in that often. And if it goes for Outrage, if Azaya goes for Outrage, it gets blown away. So this definitely is probably like a, maybe a bit faster Mew with Ice Beam to check Zygarde. And like either Wisp it or if it's an Ice Beam Mew, you can Ice Beam. Uh, Ice Beam also to break a potential sub. Ice Beam also because he's a bit weak to opposing. Uh, he's weak to double dance Landers or Landers in general, kind of. So Ice Beam's fast Mew makes sense. Uh, Toxapex is gonna go. I feel he's gonna go for T Spike here, yeah. Amalekis goes hard into the top of Lele. I think he breaks the T Spikes, yeah. Mm, DDK doesn't have good switch and this. His best switch in is Heatran, which if it's max HP, max speed, still takes a lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, Mew can switch in if it has... If it's at full, but... It will take rocks, and it's gonna be at 62. So I might get 2 it KO'd from Moonless to the range it's at. I don't have to call that, I'm pretty sure I might get 2 it KO'd. Because Mews don't really run much with death at the moment. But yeah, Scarf Lily runs a uh, Moonblast, Hidden Power Fire, and then sometimes they run Psyshock and Psychic. He goes for Psychic, so TDK gets the play correct. As, yeah, Moonblast would have 2 hit killed him, I think. Psychic so to 27, we can run a Kalk real quick. Uh, Mew. Where is uh, Top of Lily? Why am I lagging? Yeah, Psychic does 24 to 28. Moonblast would have probably been a role in Malekith's favor to 2 hit KO him. Yeah. Actually, I don't even know if it would have been a role. I think it would have 2 hit KO. When it, how much. How healthy did he. How healthy was his Mew when he switched in again? I know where Malekith is staying in, though. Yeah, he was at 61, so Moonblast would have 2 hit KO'd him. So Malekith went for Psychic because it would have hit the Heat Train a bit harder. And in case the Toxic X tries to stay in, obviously. And just overall it hits everything harder and the main reason you would go for it is obviously like I said to hit the heat train harder. But yeah TDK is spamming softball here to get his Mew healthy, he's just gonna softball again here. And we do see it's not Scarf Top Lily, he, ch he changed that move as well. So Malik is potentially expecting TDK to bring stall. Oh did he get knocked off? I didn't pay attention. No he didn't get knocked off. What is the set then? That's so weird. So his team is really slow. Um, I think that maybe he Scarf Doggy then, yeah. Otherwise his team is really slow if he's not Scarf Doggy. Like I know Mega Alakazam is fast, but it still doesn't outspeed stuff like opposing Scarfers. Like the common Scarfers, like uh, Garchomp, he can easily check them. But let me see what Scarf would be a threat for Maliki's team. I guess he has a good defensive backup to check the scar opposing Scarfers, but with Hazard up, they can definitely get annoying. Uh, scarf Lari is really common. Yeah, he has good checks for that, but Scarf Lari can be annoying because he can trick. Uh, Mew doesn't beat Clefable 101. Uh, Clefable is really amazing. Like, the Magic Guard ability is so nice here. It doesn't care about the rocks on the. Doesn't care about the T Spike. Poison and bringing this in is fine. Um, so. If TDK has like, basically what I'm trying to say is, what I meant to say is, this cannot get paralyzed by potential t bolt later on from Tapu Koko. It's probably not going to stay in on Tapu Koko anyways, but just in general, being poisoned means you cannot get any other status that you don't want. Yeah, TDK is not going to get his he Mew more healthy. His last moves are a Defog and, uh, well, a Wisp, I assume, yeah, that's just a standard moveset. set. Um, I've seen ABR run Ice Beam plus Off Paw. And maybe if he doesn't have Ice... Maybe if he doesn't have Defog, that's an option, but I think he will have Defog on his team. But yeah, TDK had no business thing, and he didn't want to Defog because he wants the Rocks up. And the T-Spike also... At least hits three Pokemon, so like, there was definitely no reason to Defog for TDK. I mean, Toxapex can't really do much to Clef, and Clef can't do anything to Pex unless... Like, even if Clef has CM, if this has Haze, it doesn't care about that. So, if both Pokemon stay in, this is gonna be boring. I hope <laughs> I hope one switches out. If this doesn't have Toxic... 
Malakis can go into his Manta, but this, he's, he will be forced to roost if he goes in his Manta. Um, if he goes into Lily, he will take Rocks plus T-Spikes, so that's not the best for Malakis. I don't think he can afford to go hard on the top of Lily here. Um, pretty sure DDK is in a better position and... I don't want to speak too soon, but it's looking good for TDK. He gets up a second T-Spike. Mm, I think one T-Spike would have been okay. Uh, I don't think he necessarily needs two T-Spikes. Because Pokemon like Lele and Zem, um, like one T-Spike hurts a little bit harder at the beginning, but if you have two T-Spikes and the month stays in longer over time, it will rack up. I think those two months that will only stay in for two or three turns, so I think regular T-Spike would have been a, a little bit better, but it's fine. It doesn't really matter. The thing is, T-Spikes has a lot of PP. He's not really forced to recover. Oh, we also do we also see he has no black sludge. So I'm pretty sure this is Chet Shell, yeah. <laughs> I mean it's not even a prediction at this point. Do you just use Chet Shell packs like so often that it's like kinda obvious? And it's kinda you kinda forced to use it too because of Dagi being centralizing. And otherwise you just get destroyed by Zardwai plus Dagi teams if you don't have Chet Shell on your packs. Um, he goes back into Mew and yeah, Malakis was Obviously defogging there. I haven't uh, commented on a tournament game in like a while. There was like a few days break So I'm kind of out of it Malakis can just Roost here Because he wants this healthy right uh, and the other option is obviously just go back to Clef But like this is just there's like just two Pokemon that if Clef is in and Mew is in or if Clef is in or Pax is in those ones just can't do anything with each other and it's just gonna be annoying, they're gonna sit there and the game is gonna take long. But yeah, if uh, TDK gets rid of top uh, of the Duck Trio, then the Tapu Koko goes in on Malakis. Tapu Koko kinda destroys Malakis if it comes in on stuff like Lefable. If TDK can predict correct, I'll get rid of Dougie, like I said. Mm. Yeah, now we have this matchup that I didn't wanna have, but. Malakis doesn't have other switches to Ice Beam, so he was obviously gonna go to dead. Yeah, TDK is just gonna get his head back up, Malakis just got his rocks back up, he's just gonna cheese back here. Um, it's pretty obvious, so I didn't feel like narrating this turn. Like the turn where he went for rocks. But yeah, I was talking about the top of Lily earlier. Mm, I'm thinking it might be Twisted Spoon with Taunt, at first I thought it was Scarf, and what I was trying to say is, sometimes they run Psyshock. Uh, and, and Psychic, because you can hit um, like stuff like Chanty harder with Psyshock. You can still hit like Ladis harder with Psyshock. Psychic is nicer. Uh, Psychic is nice with what? Well, Psychic is better with stuff like Clefable, because they're on Fist Death. He goes harder because that's a nice prediction by TDK going for Gold. Uh, in case he would have gotten the burn, this he would get nice chip damage on this. Uh, I think he predicted Malakis. Yeah, I think he predicted Malakis to go hard on the top of Lele. Um, so he wanted to try and punish the Tabula in the switch and get some more damage off and try to get a burn. So Malakis predicted probably a T-Spike there, like them or Lily both were fine. And yeah, I thought TDK would just go for T-Spike but he scolded there, which is also fine play. TDK doesn't have... Ah, uh, he does have Hazard Control in Mew, okay. Well, TDK is not gonna be able to defog and he's probably just gonna eventually get up his Hazards again to force Malakis to defog. Like, Mew doesn't really defog on them. Like, it can't defog, but it will get weakened and then it has forced to roost because it's also burned or softballed. Um. If this has Focus Blast, which it should have, this just destroys him if he can connect. But it's always the thing with Focus Blast, you do have to connect. Yeah, I think that's more, that's more of an offensive feature and because that did a lot. Mm, I can see TDK trying to pivot into Mew on a Focus Blast here. He goes for a knockoff which would have hit the Mew and it also gets rid of the lefties. So Malakis really expected some sort of stall team because he has knockoff to get rid of chances here. Violet, his Lele is not scarfed. So it's maybe Shed Shell Twisted Spoon Lele? Mm, I guess it could be Shed Shell, I didn't even think about that earlier. Just because everything could be Shed Shell because of Dagi, like Lele and Toxic Packs are two months that on Churchill kind of often because of Dougie. Mm, does he not have Focus Blast or did he make the mid ground play and knocking off? Maybe Focus Blast was a roll and knockoff brought it into range. But I'm pretty sure from the psychic damage that did a good chunk that Focus Blast would have blown his heat turn away. Like if Psy is if that did 27. 
So I get 27, I'm pretty sure Focus Blast would have popped the heat trap. Uh, let's say, oh, your trapper. Yeah, Focus Blast destroys him, holy shit, if it does that, yeah. Like, if it's that spread, which it should be because we see the psychic damage here, it's, um... Yeah, t would have gone blown away by Focus Blast, so I'm pretty sure he breaks the Mew there, or he just doesn't have Focus Blast. But getting rid of Lefties on Churn is obviously amazing, because TDK doesn't have Wish Pass or Healing Wish, or any ways to get his, his he turned back healthy. I don't think Mew learns Healing Wish, but it's definitely not going to be Healing Wish even if it learns it. I don't think it gets it either way. So this should be Focus Blast or some should have something to hit Heatran like Focus Blast because otherwise this play doesn't make much sense. There's the Z a lot pummeling. Oh, it's Z move Lele. I didn't think about that. Uh, the entire time I thought it was Z move Dougie at first, but then like after I realized that the I realized then that the Lele uh, the Lele isn't scarf because he changed up moves. So I realized then he could be Scarf Doggy, but for some reason I forgot about Z-Move Lily, I just thought he would be Twisted Spoon or... Um, Twisted Spoon slash... Shut up! Mm. But yeah, Malachis is gonna Roost or Skull here. If he breaks the Hard Coco Skull, is a nice place to get some chip. G Fox and he does not have switch ends here. His only switch in is Doggy, which TDK can just click U turn on. Yeah, TDK doesn't lose anything from clicking U turn here. He doesn't risk getting trapped by a potential Scarf Doggy, which it should be Scarf just looking from the team. Like, and like now that we know that the Lily isn't Scarf, like we, have, we knew the Lily wasn't Scarf for a while, but the Lily being Z move confirms that Doggy isn't Z move probably. And like, it has to be Scarf Doggy just. <laughs> it makes no sense otherwise. And even if the Mantan stays in here and goes for Ruse, pretty in the U turn, TDK can just go into something like uh, his Mew or his Toxic Pack. So TDK doesn't lose much yeah, from U turning here, I feel. If TDK is. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure TDK is Scarf Landorus. His Coco is. Most likely Z move Tapu Coco. Mm, we have seen Z Wild Charge with um we have seen Z Wild Charge Coco a lot lately. He just, just go for U-turn. She does 34%, so I'm gonna calc if that has uh, some attack investment or if it's a timid coco. Uh chop lele. Uh, yeah, that is definitely attack invested, or at least not minus attack nature because otherwise it would have done uh, less damage. Yeah, that's definitely attack invested coco, so I assume it's just gonna be the Z Wild Charge set. With maybe Roost and Taunt or um, Brave Bird and like you done and Z Wild Charge is pretty much confirmed. And the last two slots is either Roost HPIs, Roost Taunt, Roost Brave Bird, stuff like that. Yeah, he goes into Scarf Landers. You done probably doesn't kill, which is why I thought he would. Uh, I thought he would have gone for Earthquake because I know that I knew that Yudan wouldn't kill. So this is nice for Malakith. Uh, I mean, I mean, TDK might have predicted obviously that switch into Salus Lilith, so I understand the U turn play. And Mew still checked the top of Lily fine because it was healthy and get rid of rocks. But I still think it was. Like TDK's play, I, I get it, it makes sense. But I just feel like it was kind of obvious that like, Melikis would stay in with his top of Lily. But yeah, I'm not gonna say anything. His play was obviously fine. <laughs> Yeah, do now we have this matchup again where it's like, eh. Mark is gonna go back into one of his psychic types, yeah. But we basically know all these sets now. Celestia. Mm, Celestia took 5% from learners. I'm just gonna try to figure out if it's a fist death or sp death stealer. Because that's like the only thing I haven't found out yet. Oh, I think it's Spadef because the Clefable is Fist Death. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It should be it should be Spadef Stealer, yeah. That makes more sense because... Mm -mm, opposing Psychic types. Uh, he doesn't really have uh, Ashgrim weakness. I think, yeah, Ashgrim could still be annoying if he gets Rocks up and flinches Mantan. Like if the opponent gets up Rocks and then Mantan can get flinched. Salah Stealer would be a secondary check so uh, Greninja doesn't get the Ash form off. 
He's obviously just gonna click the psychic move. He has no reason to over predict. Toxapex doesn't die from full because it's a stupid fat mon. He's gonna hope for the burn. And he gets it, which uh, sucks for Malekith, but... I think TDK can clean up with his uh, Scarf Landers. Late game, he just has to weaken. Actually, he has to weaken a lot. He has to weaken a lot for Scarf Lander to come through. But the other... Landers U-turning around, bringing in stuff like Coco. Uncle Fable or Manton is also nice for him. Because Coco just puts a lot of pressure on Malekith if he goes to Dougie and a U-turn he will get poisoned by the T-Spikes as long as it's up. TK is probably gonna go and hit Tron slash Mew here. Um, does he need the leftovers on Mew? I think TDK can... What does he need the heat run for? He doing this rock set, so he wants to keep it to keep it to force Malakis to defog. But yeah, he goes hard heat run. I thought he would have gone to Mew there, to be honest. Um, would he keep this? I mean, at this point, it's like it's not even worth to keep this. It's only nicer to as an extra fodder, but it's probably not worth to let. It's probably not worth it to let the Mew take the potential knock off here. If Malekis predicts the Mew to come out. I don't think Malekis is switching. He could, but... Uh, Psyche kills this, and if he predicts the switch, he can just knock off the Mew. But yeah, I don't know if I talked about the spreads on TDK set, but it's pretty obvious that his Mew is more fifth dev and his Pax is more speed dev. And the turn is probably max HP, max speed. Didn't really pay attention to the cult that I ran earlier. So he does go on a Manza and... Okay, he makes the Mew play, so he broke the Psychic and he, oh, he was willing to lose his leftovers. Uh, Malakis is just gonna roost up here. If TDK predicts the roost correctly, he can go hard into the top of Coco. Uh, he can also just go into Toxapex here to get... Um, Toxapex is at... I think it's at 60, so it's at 48 after rocks. If you call in Regenerator. Damn, it's a long game. But yeah, every time he gets Coco in, I don't know why he went for Ice Beam there. I feel like... Mm -hmm. uh, he's, he's trying to force the Roost, I understand that. He's trying to force the Roost. But... I feel like if you switch, you could have switched on the packs first. To get one more Regenerator. But yeah, that's just me. I would have just played it different. It's obviously my play is not the better play. That's just how I would have played it. Like I'm, I'm not a two player. And Heracross is gonna force this out with Rock Blast here. Now uh, Malakis can go to Clefable. Clefable can take two Rock Blasts if it's max defense. But Moonblast doesn't Oko Heracross. Uh, I think Rock Blast will do like 45% with five hits as long as he doesn't crit. It should do like a little bit less than half. But that actually does a good chunk because yeah, he got a crit, so, but it's still less than half. Mm. Malakith is gonna Moonblast or Softball, obviously. Yep. So, like, yeah, Softball was his best play to have this healthy. But if he, if he went for SD there, he could have weakened the Clefable. But it's not worth it. Like, Heracross is still pretty nice to have. He basically got off the Mega on a Heracross, which means he can. I don't think the bulk helps him that much. The only thing that helps him was is take uh, Flamestore from Steel a bit better. Take Skull from Mantan better, but you don't want to switch into those moves anyway. He's gonna recover slash Skull here. If he breaks a hard Zam, he's gonna Skull, but he didn't. So Malikis got that play correct, got his Alakazam, and he traced the Regenerator earlier, which I completely forgot about. I completely forgot about that. Oh. Yeah, I have to pay more attention, I'm tired. <laughs> Man, it sucks to not have like a smoke to chat on the side because that's always funny I know you guys like that he tries this regenerator again gets more health a really great play by Malekith if, if the chat was there the chat would be saying go now TDK was willing to sack his heat run there which is understandable so he gets up the rock sacks his heat run and now he's gonna go to Tapu Koko because it's one of the Pokemon that scares out Mantine. 
Yeah, and this is kind of risky for TDK if he goes for a wild judge here and the scarf duck trio comes in. But Malekith might is Malekith willing Malekith might be willing to sack his mentor and to get to get rid of this Coco with a scarf ducky. Hmm. Now Scarf Mantan is... Yeah, Scarf Mantan is nice for... Uh, this is Scarf Mantan. Mantan is nice to have for Malekith. But if TDK U-turns here... And he go to Duggy, he loses so much momentum. Yeah, that's why I thought Malekith would be potentially willing to sack this and then trap him with Scarf Duggy. So I can understand Malekith's play there. Like, if he goes to Duggy on the U-turn, he loses so much momentum. That's why I understand his play. Like, I think he was either predicting U-turn, but... He was also in the back of his mind willing to kind of sack this, I think. Uh, so the chat would have said gold twice if the smartest chat was there. Just imagine chat would have said gold like 500 times for the last two turns, the Malekith. <laughs> for the turn where he got in Melon Mantine on the. Where he got the regenerator trace, got the Mantine on the trend. And for the turn where he defogged in the Coco, chat would have said gold so off. Tra keep tra keep tracing with generator and burn being nerfed is really amazing for Alakazam so he can keep this healthy or get us back healthy. Like he can always um, heal back the damage that he takes from Scald and Burn thanks to tracing the regen. And he can... TDK can just uh, stay in and Scald because he takes any one hit and... Actually... Hmm. Yeah, I think TDK is staying in here because even if he loses his Shad Shell... Scarf Duggy can't Oko Toxic Packs anyway. And we already know he can't be Z move Duggy. Like, even if he's Z move Duggy, he already is used to Z move with Lily. Like, I already talked about this a few times. We all know it's Scarf Duggy. It should be. Otherwise, Malakis is just wild and predicted him to bring. Oh, he did predict the Mew. I was pretty sure that TDK was staying in there. So, Malakis wanted to get. I think. I don't know. I think Malakis predicted him to switch. I don't think he was. wanted to get rid of the Shed Shell that badly. Because Pex might have a good chance to beat Dagi one on one. It just has to get a Scald burn, and we all know how Scald works. 30% is 100% if we use Scald. <laughs> and even if it's Bedef Pex, a Scarf Dagi is not that strong, so it's not gonna O call Pex, obviously. And yeah, I don't think Malakis is gonna sack his Alakazam just to get rid of the leftovers. So TDK is gonna heal up here with the Mew, go for a softball, and Malakis is gonna go into Clefable Slash. Mantan, but probably Clefable. No, I guess Mantan will. I thought Clefable is the better play because... It doesn't take any damage, basically. It. I mean, this also doesn't take damage because of the burn nerf. Yeah, I forgot about the burn nerf. But I just thought he would have gone Clefable. So he tries to burn the packs. If the packs gets burned, it will eventually be put into range from Dagi. But yeah, that'll... Hmm. No, I just thought he would have gone into Clef in case that TDK defogged and he could have just set his rocks back up. Yeah, that's why I thought he would have gone into Clef. So at first TDK was in a great position, I thought, but it's kind of... Malekith is kind of coming back. This is definitely an interesting game. I'm not gonna say it's over and like it's it can go either ways. <laughs> that one turn where TDK didn't kill the Mantan was huge. I mean, if he killed the Mantan there, then he would have gotten revenge by Scarf Duggy, I assume. And it would have been a really interesting game from there. So Gibbs tracing regen. And Malakas is just gonna go for... Either, either pivot out to get his regenerator or go for Psychic. He pivots out. Oh my lord, the god! Watch the smoke this shit going wild now if there was one, but there is none. I think there's obviously mod joint said he keeps tracing regenerator. This guy's too good. Oh, like I said it at the beginning, right? This is the first game that scores zero on zero. There's gonna be three games. So Malak is playing for Spain, TDK for East. And one team, whoever wins two games first, the, the country moves on to World Cup Finals. This World Cup Semi-Finals, if I didn't mention it earlier. I think I did, but yeah, just mentioning it again. 
Yeah, and TDK is gonna get knocked off here. He's gonna go for softball. Alakazam is gonna knock off. I really like how he played his Alakazam to get regenerator back and went to Mantine on the water absorb on the skull. That was godly. And now he's gonna switch back out. Got rid of the lefties on the Mew, which is really amazing. So this is not only for Chansey, it's also for stuff like Mew that always switches in on Alakazam, even though Shadow Ball would hurt. But yeah, knockoff makes a lot of sense because it's just great utility and he doesn't have... He's probably not knockoff on Clef. Uh, his last move on Clef could be Calm Mind or T-Wave. Mm. Malakith is not... I don't know if Malakith wants to defog. I think he wants the rocks up. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't need to defog because he's just switching between Alakazam that's already poisoned and Clefable doesn't care about the T-Spikes. The Mons in the air like Manton don't care about T-Spikes either. So he, Malakith is going to defog when uh, TDK gets his rocks up. I think he's just going to Skull here. And if he gets the burn, this is going to be a huge turn, but he doesn't get the burn. That might have been game over if he got the burn there. Clefable being at full is really important too, so it can always switch into Heracross. Scarf Lando can't put in work as long as Celestila and Mantan are healthy. Um, yeah, he would have to get rid of those two to spam off Quick, TDK would have to get rid of them. His packs already is burned and lost the Shetcher, so if it gets worn down a little bit, it can get trapped by Ducky potentially. So it's really looking a little bit better for Malekith, like overall. It's like, I would say 60-40 for Malekith that he wins this game at the moment. I think he's going to U-turn again here. Actually, I'm not sure anymore. Well, like earlier, I was earlier I was thinking Watchers was the correct play, but this turn I think Malakith might actually pull it and go in Dougie. Mm. What does TDK lose here? Um, like what? All that, what we have to think about this from either player's sides. If Malakith sacks this Mantine, the Tapu Koko is already weakened, so it only has like. One more rock switch in, so I think for Malakis it's more important to switch out here because the Coco is like almost dead already. What, what, he, does, he just doesn't have switch ins. If he goes into Dougie, he will take a lot from U turn and poison. Dougie probably takes like 50 60 percent from U turn, and then TDK will just go into oh, he woos. That's a ooh. does he get the burn? Yeah, okay, so Malakis is just willing to sack his Manta, and this is really what we learned from here. Because he keeps staying in. He just wants to get rid of this with the... I don't know, either he's a guard and keeps predicting new turn, or he just wants to sack his... He's willing to sack his... Oh, I thought he went into Dougie there. If he went into Dougie there on the Roost and the Scarf Dougie, it would have been a god play. But yeah, now that this is burnt, this is probably the wild charge, because he... Malakis knows this is physical from the damage that you turned it. After the burn, it's not going to do anything. And I'm pretty sure that Malakis has this game. Spain is gonna be one up in this tiebreaker, so this is not looking bad for Spain. The other two games are BKC versus M Dragon, which is in ADV. Which I will see if I can get my man Let Keith he start playing ADV, so he has some knowledge there. He will make it like a more of a fun narration. And because I don't know ADV, so I don't wanna narrate that alone. And what's the other game that I wanted to record? Uh, if it comes down to that game, the other game is Brofist vs. Strosgo, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. Which is a rematch they already played last year and uh, they also played in just in the semi-finals. But yeah, he, TDK knows it's not going to do any damage because he's burned, so he's just going to Moonblast. Malekith is going to Softball or Moonblast, yeah. Softball makes sense there. Uh, like, first I said Moonblast, but Softball is because if he went for the Z Wild Charge there, Malakis just wants to keep his Clefable as healthy as possible because the Heracross can be annoying. So like if he goes for Moonblast there and, the and he kills the um, Tapu Coco off potentially with a high roll. Actually I don't think Coco would have died. But he d basically wants to keep his Clef healthy to be able to check the Heracross. That's what I get. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. So keeps... Oh, he's actually burned. I said he was poisoned earlier, but he's burned. That's... Hmm. That's actually better for Malakis because burn only does 6% burn got nerfed poison. Didn't get nerfed. And this is one of the reasons why he's able to keep his unhealthy tracing region and <laughs> coming on skulls. Yeah, I don't see how TDK can come back to be honest. I just don't see him breaking the Malekith team anymore. Um, I think Malekith had a game plan, like even if his Mantan died to the Wild Charge. 
Like I'm so 100% sure that he scarfed again, he would have trapped the Coco after. And the T-Spike, like I said, don't hurt him that much even if they stayed up. The only thing that would have hurt him if he lost his maintenance is if uh, rocks go up too. I mean rocks are not super bad, but rocks are definitely annoying for him. So TDK's Coco is basically useless now. So he might just... Okay, he doesn't want to sack. He wants to keep it obviously as a far for later and stuff. But Coco is not going to do any damage. Like, it just gets warped by Clef. And I don't think Malekith is ever going to risk his Dougie now that the Coco is burned. Maybe... At first I thought, like I said, TDK can win, but I'm kind of impressed how Malekith played this. And his matchup is also not as bad as I first thought it was. Like, like I, I knew Coco would go in on his team, but he always had Scarf Dagi, so if TDK killed the Mantine, he would have gotten revenge. If he's not Scarf Dagi and I'm wrong, I'm not sure what is going on. He should be Scarf Dagi. Like, it makes no sense if he's not Scarf Dagi. Like his team is so weak to Tapu Koko. If he's not Scarf Dagi, he really needs a new team. He really, he really needs some, someone to teach him how to build. If he's not Scarf Dagi, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure he is Scarf Dagi, so it's fine. So yeah, this is just uh, packs on Mantine. Okay, he can recover and skull. I don't really want to narrate this. Did he bring in Heracross? Oh my God, is Malikis human? With the Smokers chat say now. Gets the poison on Heracross, now he's gonna, just gonna go on a Clefable as long as he doesn't get crit. Oh, he sacks off the Lele, okay. So he potentially predicted the Swords Dance there, or he was just sacking it. He didn't need it anymore, now he can go on a Clefable and click Moonblast, or he can go into Alakazam and click Psychic. Alakazam and click Psychic is probably the better play. Yeah, Alakazam and click Psychic is the better play. What am I saying? I mean, that was a fine play by Malekith, but... Yeah, I probably would have gone to Clef there, even though it was unnecessary. Like, it's a bit different if I'm watching or if I'm playing myself. Like, if I play myself and I see all the sets. So he goes, oh, is he Aerial Ace? I think he's Aerial Ace. Scarf Aerial Ace? Yep, predicted. He has to be Scarf Aerial Ace. Like, there's no way he's not Scarf, like I said. And the only reason to bring it out is if you're Aerial Ace. So yeah, Malakis wins this. This game is over. TDK can go into Landris here. It doesn't matter because he has to take rocks. He will get chipped down. Malakis just gets a free switch into... Celestila, and even if Celestila gets knocked off, it's the really annoying for TDK because of the lead sheet. And it's Coco after it get burned, that won't do enough damage. Okay, goes Coco. So he's gonna roost a U turn here. I don't see how this doesn't. Like, okay, he went hard for Z wild charge, like, nice prediction, but this is not gonna do anything. Um, considering he was burned, he did a good chunk. If he has Taunt, this would be okay for TDK, but the game is just over, like... Taunt would be nice to have and all that, but it's not gonna change the outcome. So... This Ben is gonna be 1-0, one up 1-0 one oh, up one oh in the tiebreak. What's his use? Unless something crazy happens. And yeah, the last move is Calm Mind. I was thinking it's either T Wave or Calm Mind. So the Rocks Calm Mind Clef, which a lot of people have been using lately. Brofus has used it from East. I've seen it on the NJMP team that uh, Black Oblivion used was a Psychic Mewtwo. And yeah, I hope I get a Smog to share for the next game. Like some sort of chat on main. Or they fix Smog I don't think they're gonna fix Smog So Pax has Haze, but like, Malikis was just trying to waste PP, I guess. Oh, in case TDK switched, he would've been in a fine position. So when Hard Steel operating the Earthquake there, TDK makes a nice prediction. He's in the back, he has to try to get the reads now, but uh, I really don't see how TDK can come back from this. He always could go into Clefable on the Pax or into Mantine. He can even, sw yeah, or even into Alakazam. I'm, I didn't even think... It I don't know what is wrong with me sometimes, like... Like he has... Basically he has so many options. 
you can go to Clef, you can go to Mantan on the skull, you can go to Alakazam to trace the regenerator. I was just thinking that he was not gonna do them, but it obviously works out for him. Uh, Mew's gonna be forced to soft build up, it's eventually gonna run out of run out of PP. TDK is gonna be forced to go back into his uh, toxic packs here. Oh, he has to try and crit this with Landers EQ, which doesn't even work because he was for EQ. Um, like sees he's locked in, he can just spam softball and get a free switch into Celestina. So TDK always has to double, but he doesn't have doesn't even have anything that pressures the Celestina that well. So it's basically just TDK. Um, Malik is slowly wasting haze and switching into Alakazam always to trace the regenerator. A uh, really nice play by TDK here. So he's gonna U turn on the Alakazam. Not that it matters because TDK has another reason that a part. Another reason why TDK can't win is because he has rocks on his side. Malakis doesn't have rocks on his side, which means TDK's lander will get shipped. Malakis Pokemon just don't take any damage. TDK can go for Roosty predicting the protect, but it doesn't even do much. Oh, he even stays in. Wow. So. Malikis even could have even lifted a critical hit, but I still don't think I would have made that play. It was a bit unnecessary, I feel. M Malikis probably has the game won 100%, but I still wouldn't have made that play. I think he predicted uh, TDK to go for Roost or something there. Oh, he just didn't want. He just didn't care because he knew he could eat it up thanks to the Coco being burned. Really, Divok. Um. TDK had to do that play, but the thing is, yeah, like Malakis can just get the rocks back up. But it's Clef later on, and rocks has more PP than Defox, so the rocks will be there to stay eventually, sooner or later. Doubles into Steeler to get some lefties. He can go for, um, nah, he doesn't want to protect on a T-Spec, I don't think. Yeah. Yeah, the Pex is eventually gonna run out of Skull PP, and then. I think Malakis is like. Malakis is playing fine. Besides, I don't really like the play that he made with Celestila, but it, it's obviously not gonna be a play that like cost him the game or anything. I just wouldn't have made the play. And overall. Yeah, like the, the, problem, the problem here was Malakis um, just analyzed this really well, I feel. Because TDK's main way of breaking Malakis was Coco. And Coco would have been gone if he sacked his um, Mantine. His Gavdagi revenges Coco. And then what? how else could TDK apply offensive pressure to Malakis? Because his Mew couldn't really do much. Um, his arrow cross always get checked by uh, Clefable. So I guess he had, had to crit the Clefable multiple times to break through that or something. I think he had to SD up and weaken the Clef. Maybe yeah, if he lost his Coco then. But I don't think TDK could have rolling through. There's also still... Hmm. Like Malakis just had a little bit of a better matchup than I thought at first. I obviously at first I didn't know if he was Scarf Doggy. I thought he was Scarf Mantine because you can afford to run a Scarf Mantine if you are using... Um, you can afford to run a Scarf Lily. Did I just say Scarf Mantine? I meant you can afford to run Scarf Lily if you have a Mantan that checks Volcarona, uh, that counters Volcarona even, depending on your spread. Um, yeah, there's not much to commentate on, it's just Malakis dominate. like, the, it's not like he's, he doesn't even have to outplay, he's just in a better position, so he's just gonna U turn here on the Shazdula. Okay, he edged, so he went for edge crits, I guess. If he had knockoff, he could've gone for it there, but he might be the punishment set that East has been running, U turn so much punishment off quick Lando. Punishment is a move that does more damage if the opponent goes for Calm it's It checks stuff like uh, Calm and Clef, uh, Reuniclus, not Clefable. And what else does it check? I don't really can think of another setup sweeper. But it came into handy in one of the games, uh, Flame King was jammed. So TK just gonna soft build up. Oh, he defog, wow. I really didn't think he would do that. So now Mew's gonna soft build, Clefable's gonna throw the rocks back up, and the game is just. The game has been over, he comments, okay. I don't know why I didn't go for rocks first, but it's fine. Because this is gonna force the packs in. And the, yeah, that's the rocks. The packs is gonna haze slash... I don't fucking know, man. But this game is over, it's just a matter of time. I, but I obviously understand that TDK is still playing because it's a tiebreaker. 
Uh, his team has to win this. So he's gonna do everything and play for the choke slash disconnection. I guess I'm gonna just click a psychic. And Mule is always getting chipped by rocks, lost its uh, lefties, it's burned, so it always takes that chip and it's eventually gonna run out of softballs. Malakis can just double back into Alakazam, I feel, because the best move that Mew has to hit Alakazam is Ice Beam, and if he goes, gets Alakazam in and packs... I mean, you can also just calm it, but I feel like doubling into Alakazam would have been a better play to apply some offensive presence, pressure, and make this game not last as long, because the packs was pretty obvious there. But, oh well. Scarf every day is interesting. Is that only for Heracross, or is that for, some, for Heracross if he needs his Clefable healthy in some matchups, maybe? He obviously needs Heracross Wheaton before he can go for that. So he's just going for edge crits on the Steeler. We have figured out he doesn't have knockoff. I think he would have gone for knockoff by now if he had it. Damn, this is really gonna be like a one hour game or something. So he's gonna leech sit here, get his Xyzilla back to full, as long as he hits, which he does. So he's just gonna go back into clever uh, Alakazam. And oh this time he goes immense. <laughs> yeah, the Sandus uh, only has two more rock switches, so it's over. I mean I knew it's over, but like I already know. Ah, uh, I mean this hack sucks, but I don't think it was like game changing. The game would have been a bit closer if TDK went for Valshot and a Mentan and then would have gone trapped by Dagi, but I still think Malekith um had it all figured out how he could have won it. Alakazam's trace. Oh, I think. Oh, oh, earlier, earlier in the game, I just realized the mistake. Earlier in the game, I said Alakazam can trace Flashfire, but it wasn't Mega Evolved yet. Oh, I'm gonna make a comment. I'm mad at myself now. <laughs> that always happens when I don't sleep enough. Yeah, I said he can switch into Alakazam and trace Flashfire from Heat when he clearly didn't have the Mega Evolution up yet. But this is what I'm talking about. Um. Mew is gonna be in a really bad position here because of Rock's burn and potential of Spadef drop. Crit just speeds it up there. Like the, the, the hex didn't matter and didn't change the outcome of the game. And I kind of lost my train of thought. Yeah, like I think Malekith, exactly. Yeah, I was talking about how Malekith has the tools to win this game, even if he lost his mantan. Like Rock's would have been the only annoying part thing for him, but Clef doesn't get hurt by Rock's. So the Steeler has lefties and protect. Alakazam can trace regenerator and yeah. TDK said to G, so I think he forfeited. And I'll see you guys with the next game, which will be. Um, I don't know if it's ADV. I think it will be ADV BKC versus Spam Dragon. We shall see though. Spain is up 1 0. Good job, Malakis. Um, I think he had better matchup though. I didn't realize that at first. So yeah, I made some little mis narration mistakes, um, but I think overall my narration is fine. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Stay tuned for the next uh, game, and we'll see if game two decides this, or if East can win game two and bring it to a game three, and then the final, the winner of the series will play Team Europe in the finals of World Cup. Team Europe is waiting, and yep, I'm gonna upload this now, and stay tuned for my World Cup content.